This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I set up symmetry to make a crown? Now this question was sent along with an image, and here we have the image here. So the user wants to create this shape in the middle here and have it retain its symmetry in X, but then also take this shape and then repeat it around the head of their model to create a crown. And after this crown is created, they want to be able to come through and say modify this part of the mesh here and have it be reflected across all those other parts in the crown. So how can we go by doing that inside of ZBrush? So I'm going to hop over to ZBrush here, and I just have the female demo head here loaded in. And to start, I just want to create a part in the middle of the head of the model here so I can start manipulating it. So I first want to make sure I have symmetry turned on. So I'm going to come up here to the transform area up here and make sure that activate symmetry is turned on. And then it's also in the X axis. And you can press X on your keyboard to toggle symmetry as well. Then I want to get out of perspective. So I'm coming here and turn perspective off. I'm also going to turn off my floor grid here. And now I want to select an IMM brush. So I'm going to come over here to the brush palette and open this up. And I'm going to select the IMM model kit brush. So this is a brush inside of ZBrush that contains a bunch of different insert mesh parts. So you can see after this brush is loaded, you'll see all these parts at the top here. I can press M on my keyboard here to open these up. And in here, I want to select the fasteners seven. So this part is pretty simple here and I can come through and modify it to create that part for the crown. So I'm just gonna select that part there. Then I'm gonna come across the middle of the demo head female here and click and drag. And as I'm dragging this out, I'm gonna hold shift. I'm just going to lock it into the camera axis there. And now if I rotate the model, I should have something like this. Now after I have the IMM part created on the mesh, you'll see that this part is unmasked. Now, after this is created, I can now split this off to its own subtool by looking at the masked and unmasked parts of my mesh. So I'm gonna to navigate to the tool palette over here. I'm gonna to go to the subtool palette and open this up. I'm gonna go down to the split area. And in the split area here, we have a split unmasked points. So it's gonna look at the unmasked portions of the subtool and then split them off to a new subtool. So I'm coming over here and click that. And you'll see now I have the female head and then directly below it, I have that IMM part that is now its own subtool. So now that I have this part as its own subtool, I can now say switch to the move brush by going back to the brush palette over here and then coming down to move. And now I still have that symmetry active. So if I come over here and adjust my draw size and come across this part that I just added, you can stand and start manipulating this and it's gonna retain that symmetry. So now that I have my initial shape created here, now I wanna take this shape and I wanna repeat it around the head, but I wanna make sure that I keep this symmetry active. So what I can use is the array mesh function inside of ZBrush to take this shape and then instance it across in an array format that allow me to then manipulate all the different parts on the model and still keep this symmetry active. So to do this, I'm gonna go over to the tool palette over here. I'm gonna to come to the array mesh area and open this up. In here, I want to activate the array mesh. And then with this part, I want it to be centered in the world. So if I turn on my floor palette here, you can see that this area right through here is the center of the world. So I want to take this shape and I want to rotate it around the center of the world. So before I can start applying the array mesh properties, I want to reset the array mesh so its center is in the middle of the world. And to do this, I just need to activate lock position and then come here and click reset. And this is now going to take the pivot point of the array mesh, which is usually going to be the middle of the object you have selected. And it's now going to change it to the middle of the world. So now after I have reset that pivot point, if I come down to the rotate area here and turn this on, and then go to the Y amount and type in say 360, you'll see that now this part is going to go around the center of the world. So now I have a part in the front and a part in the back. Now I can control how many parts are going to be generated by changing this repeat slider here. So if I toggle this up and down, you can see I can start getting a pretty crazy crown shape if I really want it. So I'm gonna keep this pretty low to start off, so it's maybe five. And now with the array applied, I can now go back to my original shape, which is the part that the array mesh is based off of. And if I use the move option here or any of the sculpting brushes inside a ZBrush, 
as I manipulate this part, you'll see all the other parts on the array mesh here are going to be modified. So I can come through and start modifying this part, and all the other parts are going to go with it. So this is pretty handy for creating things like the crown here. So I can come through and start manipulating this. I can use the Z modeler brush to modify this. I can divide this up by hitting Control D. And then I can come through and even use different sculpting brushes like clay buildup. And this is going to allow me to come through and modify the shape. And you'll see that all the other array instances are going to be updated as well. And I can change my repeat some more to make this a little more crazy. Switch back to that move brush. And so I can come through and start modifying this and start making that crown. So that process again was to come through and first create a beginning shape that you want to use to start your crown with. After that shape has been created, you can then use the array mesh function and you can come through and activate lock position then click reset to center the array mesh position to the middle of the world. And then you go to the rotate area here, change your amount to 360 and then you come up here to the repeat area and then toggle this slider here to decide how many repeats you want. And now if you go back to your original mesh here and start modifying it, every other part in the crown here will be modified as well. So I hope that helps. And if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.